Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending August 19th, 2017. And since you asked for more gadgets and uh, tool type of videos, I'm going to give you some more. And I'm going to show you an instance to where sometimes the old tool might even be better than the new tool. In some cases, you'll have to make your own uh, judgment call. Last time, you know, I did the uh, bracing bit and the hand drills. And obviously, they still probably wouldn't compete. As long as you've got power or good batteries, they would not compete with the electric drills. But let's kind of take a look at some wrenches here. I've got a selection of modern wrenches. As you can see, they're modern uh, crescent wrenches. And I've got an inch and a half bolt here. So, if you want to turn that bolt, well, it kind of seems logical and obvious that probably you wouldn't want to use an 8-inch. This is an 8-inch Craftsman. Obviously, it doesn't quite cut it. So let's see how a 10 inch does. This is a 10 inch Craftsman. So let's see how it does. It should open a little bit bigger, right? Eh, a little bit bigger, but it still doesn't quite make it. Huh. Okay, we could probably go to a 12 inch, right? Let's go to a 12 inch. Here is a 12 inch. Made in USA, J.H. Williams. Let's open it up, make sure it's open up all the way. And it doesn't make it. In fact, if we look at it, it isn't really significantly any more open than this one right here, the 10 inch and the 12 inch. You'd think, you know, but I've tried, I've tried multiple different wrenches. It doesn't matter if it's a 12 inch Craftsman, doesn't matter if it's a 12 inch anything, unless somebody has some unusual one somewhere. So let's go all the way up to 15 inches, the big one, the Pittsburgh from uh, Harbor Freight. Let's see if it works. Okay, we'll make sure it's open all the way. Okay, let's hold on a second here. I've got to mess around with it a little bit. Okay, now I've got it open all the way. And that one does make it. So the 15 incher does actually make it and work for the bowl. So we see in our judgment that these two here miss by just a little bit, even though they're both the same size. But what if we go with an old style wrench? How about an old style monkey wrench, one of these old Coase wrenches? The kind you can pick up at like a flea market or something like that. I mean, I don't think either one of these. This is a Coes. I think that one's a Coes made under license. This is a Coes made by the Coes Manufacturing Company. Um, basically identical. You can find them all day long at flea markets for five bucks or so. I think sometimes if you go on eBay, they might want ten, fifteen for them, uh, depending on the condition. But let's look at it and see what it does. Let's open it up. Okay, we'll slowly. Open it up here, and by golly, look at that. It fits easily. Got it tightened down on there? Yeah, yeah, it fits perfectly. No problem. And let's look at the size comparison, too. Now, obviously, it's going to be a little bit bigger than the small wrench, but we didn't even expect the small wrench to, to work anyway, so we won't count that. Let's see what, what it is compared to this. It's a little bit bigger, pretty similar. How about compared to this one that we know didn't work? Well, actually, it's a little bit smaller. Slightly thicker, but a little bit smaller in the toolbox. So, if we're talking about the wrench that actually worked, let's compare them. Look at that. Quite a difference, right? So, really, 100 year old wrench still can be pretty useful. Regular old, just look up Coe's wrench on eBay. Probably get them all day long for 10 bucks or less if you look around. Go out to farm auctions or flea markets, rural flea markets, places like that that have old farm tools. Um, they're not as easy to find as they used to be, but it's still um, pretty much every flea market that I go to that's out in a rural area. There are some around, various conditions. Sometimes the wood is not in the best condition, but if you're handy, you can kind of fix that. So anyway, hope you like this. Another thing where sometimes the old tools can actually outshine the new tools, at least in my opinion. And next, I have a video from my friend Navy Thomas. If you heard in the news recently, they just found the USS Indianapolis under 18,000 feet of water and about 600 miles from its last known location. But uh, he's going to give a little bit of insight into it uh, at first. There isn't a lot of information in yet, so I'm going to urge you to follow his channel because he has been talking about any updates and his uh, kind of uh, take on the USS Fitzgerald. And so he's kind of like one of those color commentators, but he's not like an armchair quarterback. He's somebody that's actually retired from the U.S. Navy and also a bosun's mate. So that means he's pretty much either done or helped do pretty much every job that can be possibly done aboard any kind of Navy ship. So I think he talks a little bit more from experience than your average armchair 
quarterback talking on YouTube. So anyway, take it away, Tom. a dog bark off. Anyway, there's a guy that found the USS Indianapolis, and honest to God, I thought they found that before. But they found it in the North Philippine Sea, and uh, it's like 18,000 feet down. But they won't give the coordinates, and they're not giving a whole lot of pictures or anything yet. So I'm going to have to do a video on it later, but it's amazing what this guy went through to uh, find it. And Chuck's going to link you to the uh, article. It's really really worth a good good read because you know when a ship sinks the deeper it goes the more it gets crushed and uh, after I saw this I went on YouTube and I watched some of the documentaries on the uh, Indianapolis and there, there are survivors of it. And they said uh, the deeper it got, the more it exploded, which is the compartments compressing and exploding and filling up with water. So just type in USS Indianapolis and don't watch the... Nicholas Cage's movie. Don't watch that because that's Hollywood. Watch the black and white reports from actual survivors and they'll tell you the real deal. So, this is Tom for the uh, TDD report. We'll talk to you later. Back to you, Chuck. Okay, thanks Tom, and be sure to check out his channel. I will have the links to his channel down below. He does not have a lot of information since it's just coming on uh, right now about the USS Indianapolis. He's given me the first share of what he's learned from it, so if you want to learn more about it or go back to his channel and find out about the USS Fitzgerald, uh, just subscribe to his channel and follow him. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Take care, everybody. I will catch you next week.